Hello my beautiful friends, it's Julia here again from Made by the Chef and today I've got you a sweet treat. Oh my gosh, we are going to be making one of my absolute favourite cakes of all time. This is a classic Cypriot, Middle Eastern, Mediterranean cake called Shammali. Now you might know it, you might have heard of it in the Middle East known as Baskusa. You might have also heard of it um, in Turkey, known as Revani Pastase. Well, it's Shamali. I grew up eating this cake. My mum used to make it for us all the time. And in fact, she made it a lot at special occasions. And it's amazing. Now, what is going in this cake? Well, actually, essentially, it's a semolina cake. So, you know, like you might get those Italian polenta cakes. Well, you could use polenta, but this is made with semolina. It's made with fine semolina. So I've got some here, and I've got about 500 grams, and that's going to go in the bowl. Now, what makes this cake so special, so sweet and crumbly and moist and just absolutely divine is the fact that it's soaked in syrup. And that syrup, you have to make a head. Now I've already done that. I used 500 grams of sugar, 500 mils of water, boiled it down till it was probably about two thirds down. And uh, I've got it here, I wanna show you. So this is the syrup. And my mum, she always used to say, just make sure that when you pull the spoon up, the droplets, slow right down and they drop down slowly then you know that syrup is ready so i've boiled mine down and i actually added some orange blossom water you can add rose water to it or orange blossom water and that's absolutely great and you want that syrup to be cold so the syrup now is just going to sit on the side and i'm going to let that cool right down so that we can make our cake and get that cake cooked so now i'll put the semolina in the bowl and look this is so simple because it's literally an all-in-one method i've got milk so in here i've probably got i mean got a cup load now my mum's measures always used to do this with my mum she always used to give me cup spoon this much but obviously i've had to convert it for you so i've got um probably around 220 mils of milk and that's going to go in there as well i've got sugar so i'm using brown sugar uh, this is just light soft brown sugar you could use caster sugar golden caster sugar whatever it is it's up to you you could even use granulated to be honest and that's what they would have used in cyprus one sugar for everything so in here i've got about 150 grams and that's going to go in two I've got a cup of oil. Now this is about 150 mils of oil. So I've used sunflower oil, you can use vegetable oil. Well, you'd probably even do it with a bit of olive oil, really, but I'll just use the light olive oil if you're gonna do that. So that's gonna go in there as well. I've got baking powder and the baking powder, I've got about two teaspoons. So I'm gonna whack that in two because you want it to rise up. We're not using flour, obviously we're using semolina. Semolina is wheat, is wheat derived. Um, like I said, you could use polenta. That would be absolutely fine, like maize meal. Uh, that would be perfect and that will make you gluten free. Eggs, so we're gonna put two eggs in there. Get those in as well. Just two eggs, more than enough. I've got, I've got two large eggs. So, you know, two large or even two medium will still do fine. And final ingredient. Now, in this cake, what makes it so distinctive is this thing called mastic. Mastic is known as Arabic gum. And Arabic gum are these white, opaque little stones. They're small, they look a bit like rough cut diamonds. Well, in fact, not even cut, just rough diamonds that they just mined, okay? They're just white little stones, opaque. And then what happens is you chew on it, and when you chew on it, it releases this kind of cedar, pine sort of flavor really nice very aromatic and you grind them down and you put them in the cake now, that is really what makes this cake so special now i didn't have any that's not good is it but um i've run out so anyone wants to mail me some i'll have willingly accept your donations now i'm going to use a bit of vanilla 
So I'm actually just gonna put vanilla in there and, uh, and I'm going for, I'm just gonna finish this off, uh, probably about two teaspoons. That's gone in there as well. And that's it. And now I'm just gonna stir it all up. And that really is as simple as that. So I've been stirring it up for a few minutes. And did I give props to my mum? This is her recipe. Love her. And uh, here it is. So now, just to show you, just this thickened batter. Kind of sloppy. You want a cake pan. This is a um, probably about a nine, ten, yeah, about a nine inch cake pan, loose bottomed. You might want to put it, I've oiled it, you want to give it good oil in. Uh, you might want to put it on a tray, on top of a tray. Um, make sure there's no leakage and uh, that'd be fine. <laughs> so you're going to put the mixture in the cake pan and what we're going to do is we're actually going to bake it in total for about 45 minutes or so. It's at 180 degrees, that's about gas mark five. And uh, what we're going to do though is we're going to let it cook halfway through first. So you're going to let it go probably for about 25 minutes. Then we're going to take it out and I'm going to show you what to do. Hello, my lovely friends. So, cake's cooked about halfway. Got it out the oven. It's a nice golden colour. And what you're going to do, you're actually going to cut lines into it. So this is where you cut squares into the cake. This is where you give the cake its shape because when you pour that syrup on and it's fully cooked, then it's going to soak right through. So you want to try and get even squares and just cut along. And you could cut it into triangles as well, so that would be allowed. Now once you've cut it into the squares, what you're going to do you're actually going to put some nuts in there. Now, normally you would actually press in almonds. I mean, thing is, I went all over the place and I couldn't find any. So you know what? I'm going to stick chopped nuts on there. And all you're going to do is you're just going to sprinkle the chopped nuts around on top of the cake. My mum is going to tell me off later. Oh, no almonds. Yes, no almonds. Sorry, mum. So you're going to sprinkle them over. And just press them into the cake. That's what we want to do. Just press them into the top of the cake. So when it's cooked halfway, you'll find the cake's still quite soft. And you press them in. Press them on top. And then that is going to go back in the oven. Just for about another, probably 15 minutes or so, to finish it off and darken in colour. The cake is out of the oven. So brand a bit more. And there you go, you can have a look at it here. There you go, look at that, and I've got my nuts on top. And now, all you need to do, while the cake is hot, and your syrup is cold, so the syrup has properly cooled down now. And I added the orange blossom water, like I said before, and there's your syrup, it's nice and thick. You're gonna pour that all over the cake. Now you're gonna leave the cake in the pan. You're gonna pour the syrup over and then we're gonna leave it to soak right in. So when you pour the syrup, just pour it all around the cake and that cake will already start to absorb the syrup. Remember it's made with semolina, so eating on its own, it will be quite dry and crumbly. And that's why we need the syrup. Hello my lovely friend. Now here it is, I can't resist. I've already dived in. Shambhali cake, oh god, it's all falling apart. Oh my god, it's fantastic. Shambhali cake, it's beautiful, it's moist, it's sweet. With that lovely orange blossoming water flavouring in there. Little nutty top, absolutely amazing. Soaked all that lovely syrup in. It's just so wonderful. Please have a go. Make it at home. Stay at home with me. Have a wicked day. And I'll see you again soon.